In this lesson, we'll learn how to install applications on your Linux system. As you can tell, we already have a selection of many different applications, but we want to change things a little bit. We want to have, for example, a Twitter client and a different browser. Right from the start, you get this App Store, the Software Center. You can click on it and you will see a menu. I've clicked on it and you can see that a new window pops up with our software center. This is specific to Ubuntu, but there are many distributions that already have this feature. So in Ubuntu, you get this software center and you get many different categories for applications you might want to install. You can install fonts, games, graphic applications, internet applications, such as browsers, email clients, Twitter clients, and so on sound and video applications such as video players and you also get themes and tweaks like I showed you in the previous lesson you can also install them through the software center I'm going to the search bar on the top right and type in something like Twitter I didn't even need to press enter the search is already performed and you can see that we have loads of different applications we have the Twitter client Hotot, Terpeel and many more. For the sake of the example, I'm going to choose this one. It has the most downloads ever. I can select it and view more information on this particular application. Oh, it seems we don't have this package in the source. Must have been an error. Let's just choose another one. I'm going to click on this and there you go. This one didn't have an install button precisely for that error. I'm going to the top one and install this one instead. It has more information and it has the install button. I'm going to click on install directly and notice how it will require a password. So just do that. The reason why Linux distributions require the password is safety and security. If you're installing something that you didn't want, then it won't get installed because you didn't type in the password. So right now, the Twitter client is installing. We just need to wait a little bit until the bar goes full and we should have our new Twitter client available. In the meantime, you can search for other applications. I'm going to type in, for example, Chromium, which is the browser that Google Chrome derives from. You can see that it is accessible and we can install it. If you're a fan of Google Chrome, you can install directly Chromium on your system because if you type in something like Chrome, you won't have the Google Chrome application readily available. This is because Google Chrome requires a custom Debian package. I'm going to show you how to install Google Chrome that way. So it seems that Hotout is installed. Let's check it out. I'll go further down below. As you can see, the Twitter client is in here. I'm going to click on it and the Twitter client will be accessible. It requires a new profile and everything. I can type in my Twitter handler and it will require access to the Twitter API. So I click on it and it requires me to go to Twitter, type in my password, and then type in the code that's provided by Twitter. And after I put it in, I will have access to my Twitter feed. I'm going to leave that for another time. For now, I'm going to show you how to install Google Chrome, which requires a separate Debian file. So I'm going to Firefox first. And there you go. I'm inside the browser and I can type in google.com slash Chrome. This is the official URL. It's in Portuguese, so don't be scared. I can actually switch this to English. So let me just do that. Okay, much better. I'm going to download Chrome. And it already says that it's for Linux. So Google Chrome already knows what I should choose. And notice how we are asked to download a specific file. For Debian-based distributions such as Ubuntu or Linux Mint or elementary OS, you get to choose a .deb file. It stands for Debian. For Red Hat-based distributions such as Fedora or OpenSUSE, you get to install an RPM file. It stands for Red Hat Package Manager. So I'm going to choose this very one because I'm using VirtualBox and it requires a 32-bit package. If you're using the 64-bit on your machine directly, 
then probably you should choose this one. Don't worry about picking the wrong one. Your system will tell you whether it's right or not. So I'm going to choose the 32-bit.debian file. I will accept and install. I can download it or I can open it directly with the software center. I'm going to choose to do so. I'll open it. It is going to download really quick. It takes just a minute. And when it's finished, the software center will open and install Google Chrome. In the meantime, let me show you how you can manage the dock. I'm going to remove some of these applications in the dock because I don't want them in the dock. For example, I want to remove this one and I'm going to right click on it and you get a menu for each different application. I can create a new document and I can unlock the icon from the launcher. I've been calling it dock, but it is actually launcher. So if I click on it, I'm going to unlock it and it disappears. In the meantime, the software center is opening up and it is going to install our application. Google Chrome stable is the name of the package. It is asking me to install only if I trust it. So if you see something that should not be trusted or you didn't request, then just don't install it. I'll type in install and it is installing for me. I didn't get asked the password because I already typed in in a short period of time. So let's just wait to install and in the meantime I want to remove more buttons. I'm going to unlock this one, the presentation as well. This is the Ubuntu One service which allows me to synchronize my data. I don't want that as well. Amazon, music, and for now that's it. This is much more like it. You can actually add new ones in here. You can either pin an already existing one, for example, this one. This is the software updater that tells me to update my software. Unlike Windows, you can install updates on the fly and you don't need to restart your computer. So you can just click on install all available updates and it will do so. Okay, so it seems it requires a password here because it's been a reasonable amount of time and so it is going to install now. So as I was saying, you can update new icons to the launcher. Oh, there's my music player. Let's open it really quick. I'm just going to click on it and our music player will boot up and it will show on the left side in the launcher. You can see that a button appears on the launcher and I can right click on it and choose lock to launcher. Okay, it's done. Once I close the rhythm box player, it will still show up on the launcher. So that's great. Okay, after a while, you can see that the package is installed. And with that, I can close the software center and close Firefox. I'll go to the dashboard and type in Chrome. There you go, we have Google Chrome installed and available so we can click on it and Google Chrome will run. Let's make Google Chrome the default browser and start it. On the left side, you will see Google Chrome showing up and we can start using it. That's great. I'm going to lock Google Chrome to the launcher and this time it won't fade away. So if I close the browser here, the icon will persist on the launcher. I can move the icon around. I'm just going to hold the click and I can move it right on top. Much better. I'm also going to remove the Firefox launcher. So there you go. So in this lesson, you've learned how to successfully install packages and applications. In the next lesson, we'll get to learn how Linux works on the inside, a little more detail. We're going to learn about the file system, and you'll see that it is a lot different than Windows. So I'll see you very soon.